Sup nerd, do you have problems even when you're making a small game with plugging every little piece in together? Or maybe once again with a small game you pull out a single thing and it breaks the whole thing. Well in this video using events, I'm going to show you a pretty basic design pattern that can help with those problems. It can be used to make a pretty simple small game entirely or it can be used as a building block for a larger, more complicated game. First we'll see it in action, then we'll go over the idea, then we'll look at it in code. And at the very end, I'll go over a few more tips and pitfalls, so stick around for that. And of course, the project I'm gonna show you will be available for download in the description. So we've got a real simple game here to show what I'm talking about. At the bottom is this blue cube, that's the player. You can move back and forth. Uh, we have a little UI telling you to press space to start. We also have a score and a high score. So we press start, it says go, and these little red cubes start falling. If they hit the bottom, you get a point, and if they hit the player, then it says game over and restart, it saves the high score, and you can play again, trying to avoid the cubes, let them hit the bottom. Pretty simple game. But let's say we wanna change some things here. Uh, we wanna get rid of the score system. We don't want that anymore for some reason, so we delete that, and then I wanna add this screen shake. You'll just have to take my word for this for now, but this has no reference to the player. And we uh, start the game, and you may expect to get some errors because we removed some things, but even though we took out the score, there's no null reference exception or anything. The game is not complaining that something's been removed. And then when we get hit, we get this nice little screen shake effect. And we didn't have to have any reference to the player to do that. So we're able to add and remove things easily. Let's take a look at the idea behind this. So I've got this very artistic diagram here of our simple game. And let's take, for example, when the player gets hit and the game ends. There's a lot of things that have to happen. Even with this really simple game, we have to tell the spawner to stop spawning enemies. We have to tell the UI system to change. We have to uh, tell the score system, check for a new high score. With that screen shake, we're maybe doing a screen shake effect. And the first thought might be to just link this all up to the player, have the player tell all these things when it gets hit and that this, all this stuff should happen. And then we also have to do stuff when the game starts. So we've already got all these connections on the player, so I guess we'll just add that on there. And it should change the UI, it should go to the spawner, it should go to the, maybe there's an effect you wanna play when you start. You gotta reset the score system. Very quickly, this player class is getting super bloated. It has to know about pretty much everything else in the game when all it really should be is a thing that moves back and forth. And all of a sudden it has all these connections, all these dependencies. And if we remove something unrelated, like a screen shake effect that can break our player. So as your project is growing or you're changing things, changing and removing and adding things can become a real headache in this big tangled web we have. An alternative is to have a central event caller. And this can call out major events like the game starting, the game ending, or incrementing the score. The extra magical part about this is that the event caller doesn't even have to hold any references to these other various scripts. They themselves subscribe to those events and then they're notified when those events are called by the event caller. This way, the player can tell the central event caller to call the game over event, for example. And any script that has subscribed to that event will then do what it needs to do. So now instead of dependent on each other, these scripts are self-contained and we can easily add and remove them. Also, things like the player don't know about unrelated systems like the UI system. Finally, I think this makes things a lot easier to reason about. I know this might just seem a bit weird, like the same thing as earlier, but with extra steps, but I think if you see the code or if you try using this yourself, you'll see how just clean it is and how non-dependent on other elements everything is. You're able to plug in things and remove them easily. So let's look at that code. So I keep talking about events and that's literally what they're called in code. I know Unity has a built-in event system, um, but I just prefer to use it in C-sharp code. It seems easier to me. If you don't know anything about delegates or events, uh, Sebastian Legu has videos on them. I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'll link him in the description. Really good explanation of delegates and events. But basically they can hold references to methods. And when that event is invoked, all the methods that it's holding references to will be called. To use these, you have to make sure you're using the system namespace in your script. Uh, here, I just have this game manager. I'm making a singleton out of this so I can easily call it from other scripts. You don't have to do this. You can find another way to reference it. And then here's where I declare my events. 
I just picked three for this game, three major events that happened in this game. Game started, game lost, and score incremented. That's really the core of this game, pretty simple. Now we're keeping track of a little bit of state. Is playing, starts as false. If the player presses space, we start the game and set playing to true. And starting the game, just, that's all it is right there. Game started dot invoke. This little question mark just checks to make sure that the event is not null. We don't want to call an event that doesn't have any references to any methods that will return a null reference exception. But you can see here that this game manager does not have any explicit reference to any other scripts. It's up to those scripts to add themselves to this event and then they'll be called when this event happens. So we can remove them without breaking the game manager. So let's go over and look at one of those and see how they add themselves. For example, in the enemy spawner, it is really this simple. We get a reference to the event, game manager .instance game started, and we plus equals a method we want to call. This simply just adds this method to the list of references in that event, and whenever that event is invoked, this method will run. So in the case of game started, start spawning will run. That just starts a coroutine, which starts spawning some enemies, pretty simple down here. And then we do the same thing for lost, game lost plus equals stop spawning. That subscribes the stop spawning method to the game lost event. And in this way, all the like connection setup responsibility for each element is contained within that element. And we can just plug this in easily and make it subscribe and get it connected without having to add anything to game manager. So we can see doing this in the score system, in the score incremented event, we increment the score, the game started event, we reset the score. We can really simply add in new elements. And if we were to remove one of these elements, game manager doesn't have any reference to them. They add themselves. So if they're not there in the first place, and they're not gonna add themselves, there'll be no problems. We can remove them and it won't affect anything else. There are a couple of things to watch out for. For example, if you're creating and destroying objects or hopefully pooling objects, if it is still subscribed when it is destroyed and then that event is called, it's gonna look for that object to call the method uh, that it's subscribed to the event with. So if that object no longer exists, it will throw an error. All you have to do is make sure that if an object is being destroyed that was subscribed, that it unsubscribes. And this is quite simple as well. You just get a reference to the event you want to unsubscribe to, and instead of subscribing by plus, <laughs> instead of subscribing by pressing plus equals, you unsubscribe by doing minus equals, and that removes this method from that event. Secondly, don't overuse this, or at least don't put too many events on one event caller. For example, let's say you are trying to use this pattern in a slightly more complex game. The player can take damage uh, multiple times before dying. So you could have overarching game state stuff, like in this example, on one event caller, but then maybe a take damage event on the player. And you can have things subscribed to that like sounds or post-processing effects or a health system. It's useful to know for this example that events can take parameters and they can also return values. So for example, on your take damage event, it could take in an int value and then all the other methods that subscribe to that event will take in that int value. So you could take a variable amount of damage and you could pass a large amount of damage or a small amount of damage to the sound effect, so a different sound effect plays, all from still one single same event and still retain all this nice, clean, modular ability that events gives you. That's all I got. If you want to download this project, you can in the description. And if you want to subscribe, you'll see more Unity game development related stuff and maybe some VR stuff too. Uh, but I'll see you around. Thanks for watching.